The tool that we're going to be looking at in today's video is personally one that I think is misunderstood and therefore very much underused when it comes to post-producing our photographs. We all know that light is the most important aspect of photography and the contrast that light and shade produces makes our photographs what they are. And this tool has a huge bearing on how that appears in our photographs and how we can make that contrast stand out when we're post-producing our pictures. So join me for this latest episode of The Basics of Photography as we look into the Tone Curve tool. You may not have come across the tone curve before and you might be wondering how it can help your photographs or you may have noticed it on the post-production software screen but not really known how to tackle it. Unlike the sliders that you get in most post-production software that gives you a clear idea of whether you are increasing or decreasing something, the tone curve is simply a copy of the histogram graph with a line going from the bottom left hand corner to the top right hand corner and it doesn't really give you any clues on what to do with it. So in this video we're going to take you into post-production software to have a look at the capabilities of this tone curve and exactly how to use it. If you haven't used it before but have come across it, you may have come across this term or just put an S curve on it because that increases the contrast of the photograph. But the tone curve is so much more than just an S curve as you'll find out over the next few minutes. What I will point out is that for this tutorial I'll be using Capture One which is my first choice of editing software. But the tone curve is universal across all post-production softwares and any software worth its salt will allow you to do the things that I will be doing in this video today. So don't worry if you don't have Capture One because this video will still be relevant. So let's dive into the software now, take a photograph and see what we can do with it using that tone curve. So here we are in our post-production software and I've chosen this photograph in particular because of its contrast. We've got quite detailed contrast between the light and shade on the trig point which is the central focal point of the photograph. We've got a nice bit of contrast in the sky and we've also got that colour contrast as well between the green and the blue. What you'll see as we navigate down the edits panel to the curves tool that I haven't made any edits prior to what we're going to do here just so I can show you exactly what the curves tool is capable of doing. So the curve tool is basically a histogram graph which is a tonal map of the photograph where we've got the shadows on the left hand side through the midtones in the middle of the graph to the highlights on the right and we've got this diagonal line that takes you from the bottom left corner right up to the top right corner. Now on this graph in particular, the, the point in the bottom left is known as the black point and the point at the top right is known as the white point. And then anything in between there will edit the various different tones in between those points. Now you'll also see that we've got various different curve options. So we've got RGB, which edits the whole of the photograph from the tonal differences to the colour contrast. 
we've got a luma curve which just edits the tonal differences. So if you imagine this photograph in black and white, you'd be just editing the tones of those black and white and the, the greys and various other shades that you get. And then you can also split the curve up into red, green and blue channels individually. Now, if you've been following my videos, particularly these ones on post-production software, you'll know that I color grade my photographs using a different technique here in Capture One. So if you want to learn a bit more about color grading, then check out that video after you've watched this one, uh, because we won't be doing too much around these individual channels in this video. We're just going to be looking at editing the photograph as a whole. So that term that you often hear people say, where they say, oh, just slap an S-curve on the curves tool and you'll be all right, because that just boosts the contrast of the photograph. We can do that if I just go up to here, and these are all presets, by the way, of various different things that you can achieve using the tone curve, but we're going to do it individually. I don't mind presets, but I think that they can dictate your photographs more than you, your personal intent. I always think it's better, really, to do things yourself. So here, if I just add a little S curve by pulling these points down, in, at the bottom and pushing them up at the top, you can see that it, it definitely increases the, the contrast of the photograph, but I feel it's just maybe pushing it a bit too far. We're starting to lose and maybe clip a few of the highlights on the right-hand side of the trig point and in the clouds, and although the shadows look okay, that's just drawing my eye a bit too much to that. So I wouldn't necessarily go for that S-curve on this photograph in particular. Another thing that people don't necessarily get when they're editing photographs using the tone curve is that you don't necessarily just have to edit this line in between the white and black point. You can also edit the white and black points themselves. So if I push this black point up the side of the graph, you can see that it's having an effect of flattening that photograph quite considerably. But if I pull it to the right, to the point at which my histogram peaks start, you can see that it's having the effect of bringing the life into those shadows and darkening them down a bit. But at the same time, it's leaving those highlights because we've left the white point in the same place as they were. So we're not clipping any details by altering that, that highlight contrast. So equally with the white point, if I pull that along the top, it starts bleaching out the highlights. And if I push it down the side, then it darkens or dulls those highlights down a bit. I quite like it where it is. So I'm going to, for this demonstration anyway, leave that point exactly where it is. Now, what I tend to like doing to start off with is just putting an anchor point in the centre of my graph, because then that gives me the choice of increasing the midtones if I wanted to, or pulling them down slightly. I don't necessarily want to do either of those things with this photograph, because I, I think the contrast as it is there is popping quite nicely. And if we look at the before and after, you can see that there's definitely a, a change in terms of the contrast there. The cloud on the before side is just looking a bit dull, but it's definitely popping a bit more on that after side, as is the shadow there on the trig point as well. So I'm already quite happy with that, and all we've done is just brought the black point in a bit. So you can see that this tool is powerful, but also not that difficult to, to work with once you get your head around it. The other thing I'm going to do is just put a point sort of near to this crossing point on the grid behind the graph here and pull that down ever so slightly a bit more. So we're getting a bit of an S curve going up towards that central point, but it's not a full S curve. And again, that's just intensifying those shadows. I think that we can get into this mindset of thinking that a good dynamic range on a photograph is where you've got details right the way from shadows all the way through to highlights. But sometimes I think that can make photographs look boring if there's not enough contrast there. I think that's a modern trend that we're seeing quite a lot in photography, that we have this flat dynamic range. But 
Personally, I think we're heading in the wrong direction with that. I think contrast is really key to making really nice photographs that pop and catch people's eye. So the other thing that I'm going to do, instead of getting that, making that S curve, is I'm just going to pull down those highlights ever so slightly. I don't want it to be washed out, but I don't want it to look too dark either. I, I'm, I'm looking for contrast here. And with the tone curve, like any other tool in post-production, it's all about fine-tuning adjustments, not doing things too much so it creates a, a really over-post-produced effect, but just doing it subtly and playing around with different things so you get the effect that you'd like. And I'm just going to push this mid-tone area up ever so slightly. So instead of an S curve, we've almost got like a, a bird in flight from the side, maybe on an angle. <laughs> That's not going to take on, is it? But it's definitely boosting the contrast of this photograph across all of those tonal and colour differences. You will see that it's made a bit of difference in, in terms of the colour of the sky. It's made the sky not as purpley blue it's brought a bit more cyan into it but I'm not really worried about that at the moment because as I say I color grade my photographs in a different way so I can always go back to that color grading tool and correct that if needs be. So that's basically the tone curve in a nutshell it's a way of bringing a bit of contrast into the photograph that you might not be able to fine tune as much with that basic contrast slider. And remember that I haven't touched any of these sliders at all. The only difference is between what you can see in this photograph is purely what we've done on that tone curve. Now, before I wrap up this video, I just want to reset it and, as you can see, quite a stark difference there. And just talk you through the Luma curve, because I think this is a really useful tool as well. I'm not sure whether a lot of other post-production software has this built in, but Capture One does, and I think it's a really powerful tool. So again, I'm going to come up here and put five points on all the channel, on, on all these points. And again, I'm just going to pull that black point across a bit. But what you can see if I do that now is it's... Just starting to darken that because I've put the five points on, it's darkening the, the bottom area and making it almost look like a, a digital print or something. So that on the Luma curve isn't really doing what I would like it to do. So instead, I'm just going to pull this bottom section down a bit and make a similar sort of pattern to what we had on the RGB curve, just to make the most of those different tonal differences. But what you can see here is the blue of the sky, although it's lightened slightly, it's kept the same colour. And the grass as well, you can see that it's kept exactly the same colour, but that it's just those tonal differences that are changing. So sometimes if you don't want to affect the whole of the photograph, then the Luma Curve can do a really good job in just editing the light and the shade. The Tone Curve tool shouldn't be something that we get frightened of just because it looks a bit daunting. It should be a way of really easily and quickly manipulating that contrast in your photograph and making subtle differences that make a huge difference to the overall look of your photograph. Not just in terms of tonal contrast, but in terms of colour contrast as well, as we've just seen. After I filmed that portion of the video, I went back and made a few other subtle changes elsewhere and did a bit of colour grading just to get the photograph to exactly where I wanted it to be. And this is the result that you can see on the screen at the moment. You can see that the colours have stayed nice and tonal like they were in terms of the blues and the greens, but we've added so much more pop to the light and shade of the photograph as well and brought quite a bit more detail back into the clouds. 
which all make for a more interesting, less flat photograph, which, as I said, as I was describing the way that I was using the tonal curve, can sometimes be detrimental in just making your photographs look a bit boring. Dynamic range should be something that we embrace, not think that it has to be completely flat. If you've enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up. If you use the tonal curve in a different way or have your own techniques, then please share them with me in that comment section below. As we're all learning, I think it'd be useful for me to know different techniques that other people use as well, so I'd love to hear from you on that. If you haven't yet subscribed to the Yorkshire Photo Walks YouTube channel, then please do so for more content like this. And remember to click on that bell icon to be reminded every time we post a new video. If you want to learn about photography skills and techniques out in the field, then check out YorkshirePhotoWalks.com for our latest schedule of expert photography tuition on short, unique walks through inspirational Yorkshire locations. If you'd like to learn more about what we do, keep up to date with us with all of our latest news and photo walk photographs, then follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Photo Walks Yorks. And if you'd like to keep up to date with my personal portfolio of work and keep a track of what I'm doing in the world of photography, then go to the flatcappedphotographer.co.uk. The tone curve is a really powerful tool. And if we ignore it, then we're often ignoring a really important way of boosting contrast in the photographs that we make. So next time you log into the post-production software you own, go to that Tones Curve tool, play around with it, and you'll be amazed at the results that you get. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.